What's going on everyone? Welcome to the RA Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today I may or may not have just wasted $100, but I was browsing Amazon the other day and I stumbled upon this. The Sanshuku RX580 8 gig 2048 stream processor version. And at first glance, I was thinking the same thing as you. There's no way that this is a brand new RX 580. It has to be another refurbished mining card and by judging by the uh, plain brown box that it comes in, I'm starting to feel like I may have got scammed. So today we're gonna unbox this card, throw it in our test system to see if it even works and then run it through our gaming gauntlet to see if it's worth paying for one of these cards on Amazon. Seeing as it's basically the same as the other 2048 stream processor RX 580s, on Amazon, and it's about actually 20 bucks cheaper right now at the time of filming this video. So let's hear a word from our sponsor and we'll hop right into it. Stop overpaying for Windows 10 and 11 activation keys. <laughs> With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. To get started, head over to VIPURCDKey.com and search for the software that you're looking for and add it to your cart. If you're installing Windows, be sure that the key you purchase is the same as what is installed on your system. Once your product is in the cart, you can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. From here, you just need to follow the prompts and purchase your key with your preferred payment method. I personally always choose PayPal. Once your payment is done, navigate to your user center and click on My purchased orders. This is where you'll find your activation code once your payment is processed. From here, it's as easy as copying your key from the user center and pasting it into the Windows activation page on your desktop. You'll now have a fully activated version of Windows 10 that is also upgradable to a Windows 11 if you want. So check out the links below and save yourself some money. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay guys, let's get right into this. So depending on which video you see first, you'll notice that I look the same as uh, the video where I unbox the Dell Precision Workstation that I just got. That is because it's the same night both of these things showed up at the same time so I'm just gonna unbox both of them uh, because for this thing right here I like I said I want to know if I got scammed or not I want to know if I mean look at this box it showed up in just a you know very plain cardboard box and it just says graphics card Sanshuku um, Shan Sanshuku again with some dots I don't I Shan Sanshuku that is the name apparently yes um, on the back, it just says application applied to desktops. That is very, very obvious. Uh, it does have a two year warranty. That's that's nice. Uh, again, the name is Sanshuku. Uh, they are from Dongwon Jan Technology Co. Limited. Uh, and this is their address. So we know we know where to find them if they scam us guys. Uh, made in China, obviously. We know these are Chinese, Chinese RX 580s. So um, again, like I, I've, like I said, I've seen those other ones on Amazon. And uh, I want to know if this one was real because, like I said, this one's cheaper. It comes in twenty dollars cheaper than the other ones I was seeing. So I'm like, hey, if this is real, this could be a steal right here. So, as you see, I open the box and it, it looks like we have a graphics card, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as far as I can tell, this is a graphics card. So let me let me move this box out the way. That's that's that. By the way, that's all that's in the box, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Just enough, plenty of plenty of padding though, to be fair. But here we go. Um, it's in an anti-static bag, as it should be. Um, Let's take this thing out and uh, and see what it looks like in person um, if it matches the listing. So, guys, this does come with a nice thick, like, is that metal or is that plastic? That might just be plastic. Right? I think it is. Look at this. Look at this. I think that's pla a piece of plastic meant to look like a metal backplate. Pretty clever on them, but it does look nice. I'll give them that. Um, so here, here's what it looks like. Here's the here's the shroud right here. Um, as you can see. These stickers are not super high quality. They're just kind of, I don't know, man, not not very high quality stickers is all I can say, but uh, it looks okay. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, it, you're gonna see it from the side right here and that doesn't look bad at all. Um, again, requires just one eight pin connector right there. And then, uh, I mean, as far as I'm, I can tell here, there that's a regular AMD PCB, um, full XT, X16 sorry, slot right there. Um, and then as far as IO, um, it's not terrible either. You get, uh, you get, what is this? Two display ports and an HDMI. So you can run three monitors at the same time with this. So really guys, uh, uh, the only way to really tell if we got scammed is to test it. Um, like, but as far as I can tell, I mean, look at this, even the heat, 
the heat pipes in there, they colored them. So they're all black and it actually looks really nice. So what we really need to do guys is get it in a system and test it out and see if we actually did get scammed. Okay everyone, so basically what we have here is a cut down RX 580 eight gig. Being that instead of the 2304 stream processors that the full RX 580 has, this one only has 2048 stream processors. So right out of the gate, I already know that this will hinder its performance, but how much? And can this card still show some good value in a budget 1080p system? Let's find out. So as usual, the first thing we have to do is install it in our test system, which actually went very smoothly. The card only requires a single eight pin connector. So that was also very easy connect. And then for the moment of truth, and would you look at that, the system boots up and it didn't explode. Okay, well I'm already starting to feel better right now, so let's go ahead and test it and see how it does in some games. Okay guys, getting things started with Overwatch 2 as usual, running the high preset with AMD FSR on at 1080p, we are getting ourselves a nice and solid 140 FPS. Uh, now this is not terrible at all, I mean some budget cards that I've tested recently have done a little bit better, but still this was a really great and smooth gaming experience and I had a lot of fun and I even got to play the game at the end of the game, so that was pretty cool too. Next, moving into Diablo 2 Resurrected at 1080p once again on the medium preset. This is where this card kind of started showing some weirdness to it in that we were only able to get an average FPS of 69. Nice. But other than that, I mean, it was a smooth game experience nonetheless, but still, I would have expected a little higher FPS with a card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM as I've seen in previous tests in this game that cards with a lot more VRAM tend to do a bit better in it, but this one might be an outlier or something like that. Uh, as you can see, the FPS is kind of locked at 69 right there on the screen. And next, jumping into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in the multiplayer version, uh, at 1080p medium low settings with AMD FSR 1.0, we are getting ourselves a nice steady 112 FPS, which to me was an actually pretty awesome gaming experience and I didn't really show any stutters or anything crazy bad like that. And then jumping over to Warzone 2.0, we were just shy of the 100 FPS mark at 97 with the same settings. Uh, this usually ends up being the case when you go to Warzone for multiplayer, but this is on the brand new map as well. Uh, so it's still a pretty good FPS number to get in a brand new map in a game that is a fairly new still. And next we hop into Apex Legends running low settings at 1080p and we are getting getting an average FPS of about 109. And now in the new team deathmatch mode, this was actually a pretty fun experience. I didn't notice any crazy stutters or anything that would affect my gameplay at all. And it was actually a really fun experience for me. Now, if you want to be super competitive in this game, obviously you'd want more FPS than this, especially at low settings. But hey, for a budget card, it did all right. And next up, we have Doom Eternal running at 1080p on the high preset. And in this game, the card was able to get us an average FPS of 90, which is a really good number to get and was pretty awesome to see, especially at the high preset. And it's really nice to see this card getting some wins, especially in well-optimized games like this. And another game that this card did really well with was Fortnite. Now running at 1080p on the pro settings, you know, low with epic view distance, we we're able to get ourselves an average FPS of 175, which I mean, you know, it doesn't always make you a better gamer guys, but hey, it helps and it may make you, you know, be able to run up on somebody like this right here and uh, just clap their cheeks. So there you go. And now into some harder titles, we start with Cyberpunk 2077 running on medium settings with AMD FSR 2.1 on, of course at 1080p, and in the built-in benchmark, we're able to get ourselves an FPS of 67 average. And then we move into the real game, especially with a bunch of combat going on and me running around like a bat out of hell and, you know, just shooting everything I see in sight, we are still able to get a nice and steady rock solid 60 FPS, which is really awesome to see. And I was pretty surprised about this for sure but uh you know it's kind of a a nice surprise i guess you could say and one of the biggest surprises with this card for me in this testing was red dead redemption 2. we're running low medium settings with amd fsr 2.0 on balanced at 1080p of course and in the built-in benchmark we were able to get 75 average fps and then moving over to the actual game we were still able to get an average fps of 65 pretty much no matter what we were doing. So here we're just kind of walking around in the camp, you know, just with a bunch of people around, a lot of lighting effects, and then riding the horse just out in the middle of the world, we were able to actually get the FPS like closer to 70. And you can see the frame right there. It's almost 80 right there when we're just riding around the world and you can get off the horse. You know, I shot the gun around a little bit. And honestly, guys, 
Super surprising to me. I had no idea that this card would play this game this well. And then moving into the Witcher 3 Enhanced Edition, running at medium settings with AMD FSR 2.0 on auto, we were able to get ourselves an average FPS of 76. And now, this number was, I gotta say, a little bit disappointing. I thought with the really good numbers we showed in Red Dead Redemption 2, we'd be able to get a little more FPS in this game. But I think, you know, uh, previous tests have shown that this game might favor NVIDIA a little bit more than AMD. So, you know, we'll give them a little bit of a pass there, but it's still, either way, a really nice play experience. And finally, moving into the newest game in our benchmarking list here, and that is Hogwarts Legacy, running at medium settings with AMD FSR 2.0 on quality at 1080p, and we were able to get ourselves an average FPS of 68. And guys, this is me being a little bit conservative here, because as I'm walking around Hogsmeade, this is one of the most taxing areas in the game, but when I go into other areas of the game, you guys, the FPS goes even higher, so... I just wanted to give you guys like the worst case scenario with it and even then it's still a really really great FPS number to get and honestly if you play Hogwarts Legacy and you end up picking up one of these cards with a nice CPU like we got here you're gonna have an awesome play experience and you're gonna be very very happy with it and it just makes me wonder if this card can do that well in this game I wonder what a real like full size full stream processor RX 588 gig can do too all right now after running the card right here through all of my benchmarks it kind of seemed to be a little bit of a mixed bag in some games like Red Dead Redemption 2 I was actually very surprised at the FPS we were getting and how smooth of an experience it seemed to be on the other hand in a game like Diablo 2 Resurrected this card really seemed to struggle compared to some other budget cards in this price range that I've tested lately now a very positive note on this card for it though is it's actually got some really great cooling only just going above 50 degrees Celsius in most games and when it was running at 100% load as well. You know, in less demanding games, it actually stayed right at that 50 degrees Celsius I noticed when I was testing it and it didn't go any higher, which is actually really good for them just kind of slapping this aftermarket like 3D printed cooler on it. Now, the big question I'm sure you guys are asking is, is this worth the $99 price tag for a new, but basically just a refurbished mining card with a new cooler on it. Well, if you take into account the price of a used RX 588 gig on eBay right now, these can still actually be had for $100 or less, just like the card we're testing today, and they are still the full version of the 580, not the 2048 SP version. The particular one I found at the time of filming this video is the XFX GTS Triple X version that comes with not only a higher boost clock, but also that 2304 stream processor count, which should equate to better performance in games and actually has a much better IO on the back of it, so you can connect it to more displays if you need to. Now, after seeing all of that, you guys, it really starts to make this Chinese refurb card look a lot less appealing at the $100 price point, or even up to like $120 like some of the other brands that are selling these same thing on Amazon. To me, it seems like you're getting a lesser GPU for basically the same money as a better one you can get on eBay, so it begs the question, which one would you guys buy? Let me know down in the comments. Now, despite the obvious concerns I just talked about, I do still think that there is a place for these cards, and it's great to see that these old mining cards aren't just being turned into e-waste, and are at least being repurposed like this with a new look so that budget gamers have something to grab for a cheap system, you know, off of Amazon. That is if shopping for hardware on eBay maybe isn't their thing. On the other hand, I really do believe that these companies should stop trying to increase their prices on these cards, as they really should be priced somewhere around $80 to $100 max. And that is because they are really just selling a used GPU that was in a mining rig with a new cooling shroud that was basically just 3D printed. So it really is kind of sketchy that they're advertising them as new on Amazon, because if you take a look closely at the pins on the PCI bracket right here, it clearly looks like it's been in and out of something more times than insert whatever sex joke you want right here. But hey, at least you watched this video and now you're more educated on what this actually is. So what do you all think? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this card and its price in the comments below. And let me know if you would consider picking one up for your next budget build. And if you are convinced and actually do want to grab one, I'll leave the link for this one down in the description as well as a couple others so that, you know, you guys can grab one. But please hurry because as more content creators start making videos on cards like this, it's bound to rise up in price just like the other 2048 SP RX 580s on Amazon have.
But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, so be sure to drop a like on it if you learned something today, or even if you were just simply entertained by my banter. And be sure to hit that sub button with those noties on, so you'll be notified on when more content goes live on this channel. Anyway, take care you guys, and have an awesome day.